Dalia Wasfi, is an internationally known speaker and activist born in the United States to an American Jewish mother and an Iraqi Muslim father. She lived in Iraq as a child, returning to the U.S. at age five after graduating from Swarthmore College with a B.A. in biology in 1993. She earned her medical degree from the University of Pennsylvania in 1997. <laughs> Dr. Waspi has made two trips to Iraq to visit her extended family since the 2003 shock and awe invasion, including a three-month stay in Basra in the spring of 2006. The media can go ahead and do a blackout of it. The truth eventually will come to light one way or another. And many people, even those who, who are in denial and can't face it, um, somewhere deep down they know that, uh, that what we're doing is wrong, what we're doing is illegal, we were lied to, uh, and we have to stop lying to ourselves and recognize that our obligation, our only obligation at this point, is to end the occupation and bring the troops home. As IVAW calls for, bring them home, take care of them when they get here, and pay reparations to the Iraqi people. But the first and foremost step is ending the occupation, bringing the troops out of harm's way, uh, getting them away from the Iraqi people who inevitably pay the highest price for continued occupation. Oded Yanan. Oded Yanan is the Israeli scholar who put forth the paper a strategy for Israel in the 1980s. And in that paper, it's a plan that's outlined to basically divide up the Arab world and Iran too, I believe, into smaller states with the idea that smaller states are weaker states and therefore easier to dominate and control. The goal is divide and conquer. If people are pitted against each other and fighting each other, then they are basically, their attention is diverted and it's easier for uh, the empire power to take the resources and subjugate the people and, and uh, then you have uh, colonialism. So in this paper, there's basically, it's a very, it was a right wing proposal, but nevertheless, you see it coming to, to pass today with the proposal to divide Iraq into three, into three parts, which is not what Iraqis want. Um, Iraqis, the majority of Iraqis, want the occupation to end. They want the restoration of Iraq. A clean break, a new strategy for securing the realm, came afterwards, but also in the spirit of, uh, of a strategy for Israel in the 1980s by Oded Yanan. That paper was written, a clean break was written by Richard Pearl, Douglas Fife, and David Wormser. All three of them had high-ranking positions in the uh, government of Benjamin Netanyahu in 1996, and that paper was written for uh, that administration in Israel. That paper called for three major objectives. Cutting off peace talks with Yasser Arafat, it was 1996, keep in mind. Launching military assaults on the occupied territories of Palestine, and those two things ended up happening. And the third uh, objective was deposing Saddam Hussein. So, 2002, Richard Pearl, Douglas Fife, and David Wormser are now all high-ranking members of the Bush administration. Richard Pearl, head of the Defense Policy Board, which is an advisory group to the Pentagon, uh, a third of its members had ties to companies that got billions of dollars of contracts when we decided to go to war. So again, conflict of interest. But uh, he was involved and he was a big cheerleader for attacking Iraq. High-ranking member of the U.S. administration that was formerly a high-ranking member of the, uh, of the Likud administration. So Americans need to have that information and then ask themselves, where does their loyalty lie? Whose agenda does this serve? Who does this benefit? Does it benefit the American people? Does it, does it defend American national security to send our troops, including the National Guard, 8,000 miles away? Or are you defending the national security of someone a little bit closer in that neighborhood in the Gulf? And, and this is, you know, it, it, it hits home, it has hit home, it will continue to hit home. But when Hurricane Katrina came, 
in 2005, September, August and September 2005, 6,800 members of the Louisiana and Mississippi National Guard were in Iraq. And they asked Michael Chertoff, who's also a Zionist neocon, they asked him, you know, why don't you bring the National Guard home? And they're like, well, we sent them to Iraq for a reason. We would only bring them home if it were an emergency. If Hurricane Katrina was not an emergency, <laughs> then maybe, maybe a hurricane that hits Malibu or the Hamptons is an emergency, not, not victimizing poor black people predominantly. But that's the reality, is that high-level members of the administration have ties to corporations, have ties to foreign governments, and Douglas Fife actually had to resign from his position in the Pentagon. He was the third highest ranking civilian in the Pentagon. And then uh, he began to be investigated by the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the FBI because top secret information, top secret U.S. information on Iran's nuclear program was leaked to the Israeli government through his office. There were issues there about ties to APAC, the American Israel Public Affairs Committee. So we have to ask ourselves, are our tax dollars being used, are the people deciding where they go, do they care about our well-being or somebody else's? And that is the ultimate question because that's what, that's what the Bush administration is telling us, that we're doing this for you, we're protecting you, this is all for you. On the political side, there are actually quotes from Philip Zelikow, who was named 9-11 commissioner. He's one of the neoconservative Zionists who is in the Bush administration's cabal at the time of the invasion. And uh, he's speaking at uh, University of Virginia in, in September of 2002. He said, why would Iraq make nuclear weapons and attack us with nuclear weapons. I'll tell you what the real reason is. It's to protect Israel. But this is not a good sell to the American people. So rather than saying to the American people, Bush says, you know, we need you to send your sons and daughters to go kill and be killed for control of oil and Israeli national security, this is not gonna go over well with the general public. But September 11th happened. We were made to be afraid. The whole country was in a state of shock. We were lied to and said Saddam Hussein did it. We were lied to and told that he had nuclear weapons and would strike us in 45 minutes. And with that pressure, there was still a lot of hesitation and of course worldwide demonstrations against the invasion. Americans need to have that information and then ask themselves, where does their loyalty lie? Whose agenda does this serve? Who does this benefit? Does it benefit the American people? Does it, does it defend American national security to send our troops, including the National Guard, a thousand miles away? Or are you defending the national security of someone a little bit closer in that neighborhood in the Gulf? I don't know if they're Israeli citizens. It doesn't take much to get Israeli citizenship. You show up and you show proof that you're Jewish and you're a citizen. So I mean, they were high-ranking members of the Israeli government at the time. Aren't Palestinians Semitic too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the definition is pretty much anybody from that region, the Mediter Mediterranean region. Um, you know, what can I say? The Zionists took the land, they took the terms, they took the hummus. <laughs> it's a tough call to say who's controlling whom. Both administrations, Israeli and U.S. administrations, um, are, are benefiting from the relationship and uh, the majority of people are, are, paying, are paying a price, and a horrible price. An American Jewish mother and an Iraqi Muslim father 